Welcome to our channel. Whether you're a returning viewer or new to our community, we're thrilled to have you here. Today, we're diving deep into the book Virgin Way, written by Richard Branson. Richard Branson is a business magnate, author, and philanthropist. He is the founder of The Virgin Group, which encompasses over 400 companies. Branson has a net worth of around $4 billion and, in 2007, was listed as one of Time Magazine's most influential people in the world. Now before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest content. What does it mean to truly listen and how can it revolutionize your leadership style? This question is at the heart of our exploration today as we delve into the first major theme of Richard Branson's The Virgin Way, and that theme is none other than the power of listening. Richard Branson, a man who needs no introduction, places an extraordinary emphasis on the value of listening in effective leadership. In his view, great leaders are not just those who can command a room or deliver a captivating speech. No, truly great leaders are those who pause, who make space for others, who truly listen. You see, listening is more than just a passive act. It's an active process, a conscious choice to engage and understand. It's the doorway to empathy, the cornerstone of any successful leadership strategy. In The Virgin Way, Branson suggests that the most innovative ideas often come from the quietest voices, the ones we might miss if we're too busy talking. He believes that by opening our ears and our minds to those around us, we can foster a culture of collaboration and mutual respect. This isn't just about being polite or appearing interested. It's about valuing the input of others, about recognizing that every voice has the potential to contribute something meaningful. It's about understanding that listening sparks creativity, drives innovation, and can even inspire a whole new direction for a project or a company. Consider this. How many times have you been in a meeting where the loudest voice drowns out the others? Now, imagine the potential that could be unlocked if everyone in that room felt heard and valued. That's the power of listening. Branson's The Virgin Way is a testament to the transformative impact of active listening. It's a reminder that the best leaders are those who listen more than they speak. They are the ones who understand that every voice matters, that every idea has potential, and that through listening, we can foster an environment of understanding, collaboration, and innovation. In the realm of leadership, listening is not merely hearing, it's the bridge to better understanding, the fuel for innovation. So, the next time you find yourself leading a conversation, remember, the most powerful tool you have is not your voice, but your ears. What sets apart great decision makers from the rest? This is a question that Richard Branson, the author of The Virgin Way, ponders and explores in the second theme of his book. Branson posits that effective decision making is an art, a skill that can be honed and perfected over time. It involves more than just weighing pros and cons. It requires a certain level of courage, intuition, and the ability to learn from one's mistakes. One of the key aspects of Branson's approach to decision-making is the willingness to take calculated risks. He believes that the greatest rewards often come from the biggest risks. However, Branson emphasizes the importance of making these risks calculated, not reckless. This means gathering as much information as possible, understanding the potential outcomes, and then making a decision that aligns with your goals and values. Trusting one's instincts is another crucial element in Branson's decision-making process. He argues that our instincts are often the result of our accumulated experiences and knowledge. By listening to our gut feelings, we can tap into this wealth of subconscious wisdom. Of course, instincts should not override rational analysis, but they can certainly provide valuable insights that should not be ignored. Lastly, Branson advocates for the importance of learning from failure in the decision-making process. He views failure not as a setback, but as a learning opportunity. Every decision, whether it leads to success or failure, provides valuable lessons that can help refine future decision-making strategies. Branson's approach to decision-making is not just about making the right decisions. It's about making decisions right. It's about embracing the uncertainty, trusting your instincts, taking calculated risks, and most importantly, learning from the outcomes. So, the next time you find yourself at a crossroads, remember Branson's wisdom. Don't shy away from the decision, face it head-on with courage and conviction. Don't fear the potential for failure, see it as an opportunity for growth. And don't ignore your instincts, they are your subconscious mind's way of guiding you. Remember, 
Great leaders don't fear decisions, they make them with courage, embrace the risks, and learn from the outcomes. How can you instill a culture of innovation in your organization? This is the question that we dive into as we explore the third theme of Richard Branson's The Virgin Way. Branson firmly believes in the power of innovation and its role in driving any organization forward. But for him, innovation isn't just about grand ideas or earth-shattering inventions. It's about fostering an environment where every team member feels free to think differently, to question the status quo, and to propose fresh and sometimes unconventional solutions. At the heart of this culture of innovation in Branson's world is the concept of freedom. The freedom to dream, to propose, and to experiment. He encourages every employee to be an innovator, to be a disruptor. It's not about your title or your role. It's about your ideas, your curiosity, and your willingness to explore new paths. This freedom, Branson believes, is the catalyst for creativity and innovation. But what about failure? In many organizations, failure is seen as a disaster, something to be avoided at all costs. Branson, however, sees things differently. For him, failure is not a catastrophe. Rather, it's a learning opportunity. It's a chance to understand what didn't work, why it didn't work, and how things can be improved. It's about learning, adapting, and growing. Innovation, then, is not just about success. It's also about the courage to try, the resilience to fail, and the wisdom to learn. It's about creating an environment where failure is not the end, but a stepping stone on the path of innovation. So how can you instill a culture of innovation in your organization? Start by giving your team the freedom to think, to dream, and to experiment. Encourage them to question, to challenge, and to disrupt. And when they fail, remind them that it's not a disaster, but a golden opportunity to learn and to grow. Innovation is not a one-time event. It's a culture, a way of life that thrives on freedom, experimentation, and learning from failure. Can work be fun and still be taken seriously? This question ushers us into the fourth theme of our book summary, The Virgin Way, by Richard Branson. It's a question that challenges the traditional belief of work as a grueling necessity, a mere means to an end. Branson, however, presents a refreshing perspective, where work is not just about profit, but also about enjoyment and fulfillment. Picture this. You're at work, clocking in the hours, meeting targets, and ticking off tasks. You're efficient, but are you truly engaged? Are you excited about your work? Do you wake up each morning eager to face the day? If the answer is no, then perhaps you haven't tapped into the essence of fun and work. Branson believes that work should be more than just a paycheck at the end of the month. It should be a place of growth, a source of inspiration, and yes, a hub of fun. It's about creating an environment where people are encouraged to be themselves, to laugh, to explore, and to take risks. This might sound counterintuitive, but Branson argues that a fun work environment does not detract from professionalism or productivity. On the contrary, it enhances them. When people enjoy their work, they are more motivated, more creative, and more productive. They are not just working for the money, they are working for the joy of it. But how can we infuse fun into work? Branson suggests it starts with leadership. Leaders who value fun, who lead with a sense of humor, who celebrate successes, and who encourage a positive, playful culture. It's about striking a balance between working hard and playing hard. In the end, Branson's philosophy is not about trivializing work or making light of responsibilities. It's about recognizing that work is a significant part of our lives, and therefore it should be enjoyable. It's about creating a work culture that values happiness and fulfillment as much as it values profit and productivity. Work isn't just about earning a living, it's about living whilst earning and having fun along the way. What can we learn from Richard Branson and The Virgin Way? Diving into the heart of Branson's philosophy, we've uncovered some key takeaways that set The Virgin Way apart from your typical business book. This isn't just about building a company, it's about building a company The Virgin Way. Firstly, Branson extols the virtue of listening, urging us to not just hear but to truly understand the voices around us. Whether it's an employee's concern, a customer's feedback, or a competitor's strategy, each holds valuable insights waiting to be discovered. By opening our ears and minds to these voices, we are better equipped to respond effectively and empathetically. Next, we delve into the art of decision-making. Branson's approach is an unorthodox blend of courage, intuition, and calculated risk-taking. He teaches us to not shy away from tough calls, to trust our gut feelings, and to embrace the potential of failure as a stepping stone to success. 
The Virgin Way also champions a culture of innovation. Constantly pushing boundaries and challenging the status quo is the pulse that keeps Virgin thriving. Branson encourages us to foster environments where creativity is celebrated, where ideas fly freely, and where the impossible is merely a challenge waiting to be conquered. And let's not forget the essence of fun and work. Branson's infectious enthusiasm and zest for life permeate the fabric of Virgin. He believes that a happy team is a productive team, and that work should be a place of joy and fulfillment, not merely a means to an end. So, in sum, the Virgin Way presents us with a blueprint for leadership and entrepreneurship that is as unconventional as it is effective. It's a call to listen more, to decide with courage, to innovate relentlessly, and to create workplaces filled with joy and passion. Richard Branson's The Virgin Way challenges us to redefine leadership and entrepreneurship, to listen more, to decide with courage, to innovate relentlessly, and to find joy in our work. And that, dear viewers, is the virgin way.